Hello and welcome to our online worship for this June 2nd, the second Sunday after Pentecost. I'm David Lehman and I welcome you from across the diocese and further afield. We worship and minister on and with 10 First Nations, the Haida, Shimshan, Niska, Haisla, Gitsan, Wasetwatin, Delkani, Sakani, Korea, Indonesia, along with Meti, a privilege we gratefully acknowledge. So please, Join us as we reflect on the reading, sing the hymns, and pray the prayers. May we pray. God of rest and gladness, we praise you for the dignity of work and the joy of play, for the challenge of witness and for the invitation to delight at your table. Renew our hearts through your Sabbath rest, that we may be refreshed to continue in your work of restoring the world to wholeness. Amen. Our opening hymn is, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. A reading from the Gospels. Early in his ministry, Jesus is in Galilee. He has restored many, in, many to health, and many more seek to be cured. Some possessed by evil spirits, he is now at home with his blood relatives and his disciples. The third lesson is written in the Gospel according to Mark. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields and as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And he said to them, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food? He entered the house of God. When Abathar was high priest and ate the bread of the presence, which it is not lawful for any but the priest to eat. And he gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, 
the Sabbath was made for humankind and not humankind for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord, even of the Sabbath. Again he entered the synagogue, and a man was there who had a withered hand. He watched him to see whether he would cure him on the Sabbath, so that they might accuse him. He said to the man who had the withered hand, Come forward. Then he said to them, It is lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save life or to kill. But they were silent. He looked around at them with anger. He was grieved at their hardness of heart and said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately conspired with the Herodians against him. How do you destroy him? The gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be ever acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our salvation. Amen. Having read the gospel reading for today, I got up and went over to my bookcase, and I actually have a section of books on Sabbath rest. It is a topic that has, um, I think, been an issue since the Ten Commandments and and honoring that Sabbath rest day and what that means. I grew up um, having been the first generation not being on the farm, and I'd go back to the farm from time to time for rest for myself and to mainly get out of the busyness of either city or parish life. And it was always amazing to me how seriously the Sabbath was taken at the farm. Now, I will admit, there was a bit of a misunderstanding about when the Sabbath was. They thought Sabbath was Sunday. No, Sunday is the Lord's Day. The Sabbath is from sundown Friday to sundown Saturday. Our calendar is based on a lunar cycle, not on a solar cycle, and not on a clock, but based on sunset to sunset. And so the Jewish practice where Sabbath comes from really begins Friday evening. I remember reading this one book by a brilliant author, Lauren Winner, who talks about observing Sabbath rest, one of the seven things Christians should take more seriously from the Jewish roots. And it, honestly, it was sort of a delight to hear how the observation happened and going back to a couple other sources and a few other books and such to see people, Jewish people, scrambling to get home before sunset, making sure that food had been prepared because you can't prepare food during the Sabbath because you're resting. So they have great inventions that will slowly cook eggs and have it ready that you can have cold cuts and such pre-sliced and ready to serve. And serving the food is not work because it's required, but the preparing of it is something you do ahead of time, down to the point where you can't bathe on the Sabbath rest. I don't know about you, but every now and then, I think Sabbath rest is about taking a few moments to just stop and be in the presence of God. But there's more to it. There's such incredible heritage to this observance. Now I know for my great uncle, he thought the greatest sin you could commit on a Sunday was either to play cards, to read a newspaper, or heaven forbid, go shopping. Hence the Lord's Day Act and its sway over consumerism in Ontario for so, so many years. Well, that's gone now. We have seven day shopping cycles. I've personally been asked to send letters that stores should be open on Christmas Day because, well, if they're open 364 days, they should be open 365. This was somebody who went to church who still thought shopping should happen on Christmas Day. It's the only day now that we actually do take a rest for the most part. There are people who still have to work in convenience stores and gas stations because the world doesn't stop. 
but we live in a consumeristic society. It is driven by what we buy and what we sell and, and our value is determined by our credit score and how much junk we have. It is amazing. And yet all this lies in opposition to that commandment and to what Jesus is trying to talk about today. Christianity is not a moral code, it is not a philosophy, it is about a relationship with God. And taking a day, not just an hour on Sunday, but taking a day to think about spiritual matters and how we live spiritually, taking Lent and condensing it down to one day a week has credible potency to it and could transform not only our lives, but the lives around us. What would it mean to live saying, come Friday evening at sundown, I know we're at that time of the year where sundown is like mm, 10, 11 at night, but what if we were to say from, this, from Friday evening to Saturday evening, this is a time which I won't do work. I will spend time with family, with friends. I will spend time in prayer and in devotion. I will take time to be in God's creation. I know that's what I did last Saturday. I decided to take a picnic lunch and go out to a spot and found the grass very, very wet and wished the grass was this wet everywhere in the diocese and, you know, Western Canada at this point. Uh, but to have that time just to sort of stop and be present with God in creation. It was a gift and a gift I would like to take every week because it restores my soul. I will admit, when it comes to Sabbath rest, I am one of the worst examples there are. This is one of those times where it's do as I say, not as I do. Um, but that's to my own loss and, and to my own detriment. And something that I would, I, I struggle with and work on. For a while, I actually took Sabbath rests. And now that you know, I'm juggling too many balls, I, I find just taking a couple hours and to step out is the gift that I need. And I realize how this gift is, and Jesus says, the Sabbath is for man, not man for the Sabbath. And that we're not supposed to get caught up in the legalism of it, but in the gift that it is. The joy that we can stop and say, this is a day of rest. And then Sunday is a day of celebration, of coming to worship God, being with God's people, to hear God's word in community, to reflect on it, sing hymns, to be present, to be online as we are now, to have this time. But I also think that being ready for Sunday means taking Saturday as a Sabbath rest. And I think about the things that would be helpful for me to rest. As you know, I enjoy the daily offices. I get up and I quietly say morning prayer, join people here at the cathedral when I'm here to say prayers at midday, and then nightly with Compline. It is uh, sort of three different ways in which I engage in the offices. One private on my own, one with others helping as, I, as I'm needed to, and, um, and then one leading. It is a wonderful way for me to enter into that. But to take more time on the Sabbath and to be intentional about stepping back, intentional about, I mean, I'm a person who likes to food prep and have things ready and cook, cook once, eat several times. But having that as an intentional rhythm and being intentional about our spiritual journeys Sabbath is one of these gifts that we're given. And the question is, how do you, what do you do with it? And how are you reflecting on it? What is it that pulls you away from resting on the Sabbath? What pulls you away from being with family and friends, with um, no agenda, no meetings, no commitments, but just being present and allowing to rest a little? Maybe this is a challenge. I know it's a challenge for me. Oh. Is it ever a challenge for me? But it is one that I gladly take because I know the benefit it is for me. And I pray that today as you think about what Jesus was telling the disciples, 
that you may hear it as a call for yourself to step back, to refocus, and to be present with God. May God richly bless you this and every day. Thank you for your tithe offerings to your parish and the diocese. Our offertory hymn is Nearer My God to Thee. Let us confess our baptismal faith as we say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Prayers of the People Friends in Christ, God invites us to hold the needs of our sisters and brothers as dear to us as our own needs. Loving our neighbors as ourselves, we offer our thanksgivings and our petitions on behalf of the Church and the world. 
Let us pray to God, saying, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. By your incarnation and your birth in poverty, by your baptism, your fasting, and your trials in the desert, O Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, have mercy. By your agony in the garden, by your cross and passion, by your death and burial, by your resurrection and ascension, and by the gift of your Holy Spirit, O Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, have mercy. In times of trouble and in times of well-being, at the hour we die and on the day of our glory, O Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, have mercy. Bless those who have asked us to pray for them, either aloud or in the silence of our hearts, we remember. O Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, have mercy. Deliver us from war and violence, from hardness of the heart, from contempt of your love and your promises. O Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, have mercy. Enlighten our lives with your word, that in, in it we may find our way and our hope. O Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> Assist with your people in every land. Govern them in peace and justice. Defend them from the enemies of life. O Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, have mercy. Hear our prayers, God of power, and through the ministries of your Son, free us from the grip of the tomb, that we may desire you as the fullness of life and proclaim your saving deeds to all the world. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, and in the language closest to our hearts, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you to everyone who helps bring these services together week by week, and thank you for joining us. I pray you have a most blessed week and a time to enjoy some Sabbath rest. We continue to gather across the diocese daily at 9 p.m. for Compline on the Diocese and Facebook page. Thank you to Reverend Ken Alton for taking the services while I'm at Council of General Synod. And then Monday through Saturday at 12.15 on the Cathedral Facebook page, there's prayers at midday. And thank you to the lay readers for taking those services. There will be a midweek communion service on Wednesday as I'll be back. In all things, may the peace of God which passes all understanding continue to bless and strengthen you and guide you into all holiness and righteousness. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and indeed forevermore. Amen. Our concluding hymn is, Be Thou My Vision.
Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.